actually earthquake is a random phenomena. So, a better way to account for uncertainties in any random phenomena is to use a probabilistic framework, right. So, you will never say anything for sure that uh, this much PGA 0.5 g for example, should be my design PGA uh, for my new building, right or this much PGA should be used for the structural evaluation of existing buildings. You will never uh, use that deterministic approach. If you already know that the phenomena which we want to deal with is random. So, the best way to deal such random phenomena is that we use probabilistic framework. So, because of all those uncertainties involved, this is actually the main reason why we use probabilistic framework for hazard assessment. We will say that the probability of exceedance associated with this, this particular PGA is this much 2 percent in next 50 years or 10 percent in next 50 years. So, the fact that we are associating our hazard with some probability of exceedance is actually establishing this uh, thing that uh, there is a uncertainty involved in this number. So, I will say that 0.5 g is my design PGA for the design of new buildings, but there is still 10 percent chance that uh, this PGA is exceeded in next 50 years, right. So, we associate a probability with each number, probability of being exceeded, right. So, all those uncertainties they are there and different new PSHA methodologies uh, try to account for those uncertainties in different manner, more accurate manner as we move on and develop more and more refined PSHA schemes and procedures. For example, there will always be an uncertainty associated with the identification of seismic sources, the first step actually in this. And then there will always be uncertainty associated with how we quantify the the activity rate of each seismic source which is actually step 2 recurrence. We will never be able to find uh, an exact ground motion prediction equation which will always be applicable to our future scenario or uh, you can say future hazard. So, uh, there will be a uncertainty associated with the use of different GMPs, right. So, finally, the hazard curve which we get uh, obviously, is is uh, the result of uh, all of those steps and therefore, it, it has that uncertainty, right. So, uh, we account all those uncertainties in using different procedures. For example, one of uh, the common way to account is logic tree. Uh, logic tree idea simply says that if you have uh, for example, multiple options and you are not sure about which option is is uh, directly accurate and should be used. So, what you do is that you use all those options and check what is the result, what is the variation in result which is arising as a result of using those options. And then you take an average or actually the weighted average for the final outputs and the weights from each of the analysis is, is basically decided based on how confident you are about a particular selection. So, for example, in one particular process I am here already, let us say this is my step i and I want to go to step j of the process, but in between I have let us say three options, three decisions, uh, three options for a particular decision, right and each of the option will give me one st one output in step j. So, let me call it option 1, option 2 and option 3. Let us say this is let us say GMP, GMP 1, 2 and 3, right. So, each the use of each GMP will give me a different step j or a different answer, right. But I am not sure which GMP is more accurate. All I can do is that I can develop an understanding about their applic applicability to my case by just uh, having a validating example that let us say this is uh, option 1 GMP line, this is option 2 
and let us say this is option 3. All I can do to have more confidence on any of this option is that I select few past earthquake time histories which already occurred in my site and then let us say this is PGA versus source to site distance R. So, from past earthquake data few of them if they are available I can check their PGA values and I can check that how far they were from the source those recording stations. So, I get let us say one point from past data each point on this graph will be actually recording from one past data right. So, this was my source to site distance and this was the PGA experienced at my site in any given past earthquake. Similarly, I can have some more points and based on this matching I can say that maybe option 1 is more suitable for me than option 2 and 3 right. So, these kind of studies you can always perform to reduce the, the uncertainty or error involved in any one particular step of PSHA. So, uh, in that case what I would do is I will say that uh, maybe all three options can be used to reach to step J like this, but uh, for option 1 I select a weight, weight of 0 0.8, for option 2 and 3 I select 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 right. So, the there will be a weighted average in step J, 80 percent of the output will be taken while using option 1 GMP and 10 percent each will be taken from option 2 and 3, because I am not exactly sure, but I am more confident that option 1 is a very good candidate uh, for the pre prediction of ground motion at my site. So, this is how logic tree works right. Similarly, there is an uh, obviously there will be a decision while modeling the seismic sources also which means developing their magnitude recurrence relationships. So, there will be different options available to you. Gutenberg Richter is the most common option, but there is a characteristic model also and some other models also right. So, you might say that for my particular fault source Gutenberg Richter may not be an accurate uh, magnitude re re recurrence relationship you might say that the characteristic model may be more accurate or if you are uh, equally kind of uh, uncertain about which one is the more accurate then you may go for using both of them and then give, giving them 50 percent weightage each right. So, that is how you try to minimize the possible error in your final prediction, but uh, given all those decisions and everything. Uh, your ultimate output which is the hazard curve at a particular site will be affected and actually now, now you know the reason why we have different results from the different PSHA studies for the same study area right. Because they made different assumptions they might have used different PSHA methodologies some might have used less number of faults and more number of area sources some might have used uh, opposite some might have uh, used only area sources no faults at all, some might have used 50 percent fault model, 50 percent area sources model and combine in a logic tree framework right. So, different PSHA studies they were all attempts to characterize the hazard in a more accurate manner right. So, therefore, we have different results in different past studies for the same study area. 